It's Labor Day, traditionally a time of year when voters begin to pay a little bit more attention to a presidential race. Hillary Clinton. I'm uh, thinking about Bernie Sanders right now. Um, Every circus needs a clown, and that's where Donald Trump comes in. Is he still there by the time we get to New Hampshire? I hope not. Trump, I hope. Get rid of all everybody else and uh, mm -hmm. get Trump in there. My dad told me about Carly for... Fiorina? Fiorina, yeah. Mm. And he likes her a lot. He likes too. her? Yeah, says yeah. she's real hard-nosed. Sanders pushing the left, left. Trump pushing the right, right. I think America's yearning for somebody anti-establishment. Hillary Clinton. Good. Um, Joe Biden is not officially announced, no. but he's down there. Mm -hmm. But there, no, are, think... there are three more. There are three? No idea. I had no idea. <laughs> We're at the point of the OTR political roundtable and our two Labor Day political stalwarts this weekend. Democrat Marianne Mars is with us and Republican Pat Griffin is with us as well. Great to see you guys every weekend, this weekend and every weekend. Marianne, the war of words with the new Jeb Bush ad hitting hard at Donald Trump and his liberal past and the GOP frontrunner immediately firing back. First, listen to this. I lived in New York City and Manhattan all my life, okay? So, you know, my views are a little bit different than if I lived in Iowa. Hillary Clinton, I think, is a terrific woman. I mean, I'm a little biased because I've known her for years. We recognize the commitment of someone who has devoted her life to public service. I want to say thank you to both Secretary Clinton and to President Clinton. You know, the, the thing about that ad that grabs my attention is the clown music. The clown music. <laughs> but that's... That's, I don't know. Marianne, who wins this? Who looks better in the skirmish, anyway? Donald Trump. I mean, Jeb Bush is running a campaign from the 90s. Trump is running one from now. Jeb Bush, that was a 90-second video he put up. Okay, that's the equivalent of two full feature films at this point. <laughs> and Trump took his own words, as you saw, against him and killed him in a 14 second video in, in, on Instagram. That tells you everything about this race. And Bush is now whining that Donald Trump is treated differently as many spoiled children act when they d are not winning things. Is he a spoiled child? Are you kind of hoping Trump is <laughs> this off there? Something is telling me that no, you're just. Fact. You're just. He, here's runner. the thing, Eddie. I, I, think that, uh, I think Donald Trump is real and is realer than I've been predicting. As you know, I've been, nobody's been tougher on Trump than I have. The, the problem is, the Willendas were great wire walkers. Okay, Evil Knievel was a great stunt guy. But the more you get up there without a neck and behave in an irresponsible way, sooner or later, well, Carl Willenda. Okay, <laughs> right, so right, 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 my right, feeling right. is that this Trump thing is uh, anger. I don't believe it lasts, and I think what we're going to see in this next debate are a moment or two where something happens. That's my sense. He hasn't hit a ceiling yet, and there's no sign he that he will. He hasn't hit a ceiling. No. no. You, at the, at the, good, <coughs> the good polling in this country, there's a lot of bad polling. Yeah. He still hasn't hit a ceiling in Iowa, New Hampshire, or nationally. I don't. I'm, I disagree with that. I think I, I think he's pretty close to a ceiling, but we'll see. It, it's 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 Labor Day of 2015. It's not Labor Day of 2016. But Hillary Clinton got Senator Gene Shaheen's endorsement this weekend. Early endorsement. Is that a panic move to boost Hillary in the Grand Estate, Marianne? We're, we're not even six months away from the primary, so everybody's ramping up their campaigns. The Shaheen endorsement is not a surprise. She supported her all along, and the Shaheen endorsement in New Hampshire is important because she served as governor. She served as mm -hmm. United States senator. She beat mm -hmm. Scott Brown, and it's showing that Hillary Clinton's taking nothing for granted in New Hampshire. She's going to do everything she can to win it. What's your read, Patrick? I, I agree with Marianne that Gene Shaheen's a very important endorsement for Democrats in New Hampshire. I, I don't think they wanted to pull her out quite this soon. And the other thing I would say is that in this particular race, endorsements from establishment people, senators, congressmen, others, other than local officials, I think this is one of the problems that Hillary has in this race, and certain Republicans have against a Bernie Sanders and a Donald Trump. The endorsement game, right out of the 1980s. Uh, okay, Jeb Bush rolled out Eric Cantor, who got his head handed I, I, to I'm him. Not, I'm not. I'm not. By the way, earlier this it year. wasn't my okay. idea. Okay. That was a winner. I, I, my I, idea. I want to. I want to talk about the Middlesex County District Attorney dropping the charges this past week against an Irish nanny who was jailed for for killing, allegedly, a baby in her care, in her charge, by shaking the one-year-old. This is the second time in a year that Marion Ryan's office has to drop shaken baby charges against someone. Marianne, is this real political ba I'm, I'm, I'm not being insensitive about human beings. I'm not. But is this real political baggage for Ryan? This, Marion Ryan e is either not delivering justice for victims or committing an injustice against those she's accused. Either way, it's not a ringing endorsement of Marion Ryan as DA. You're Reed Patrick. Uh, look, there's a track record here. Two times. This is somebody who's had enormous turnover going back to 2013 with assistant uh, attorney generals. Uh, this is the same uh, woman who released Jared Remy before he killed his girlfriend. I don't think they'll be erecting a statue to her. I would also say that 
either she's not good at her job, or as Trump would say, she's got very, very low energy. But, but he would also say, I, she's a woman and I like women. So he'd, he'd say the same <laughs> I thing. I cherish women. Governor, I cherish him. Governor Charlie Baker's T Fiscal Control Board delivered some bad news this past week. To, the cost to fix the T is now $7.3 billion. With a B dollar, seven point three billion. Baker is not committing any funds. Will there ever be a happy ending when it comes to the T. Patrick? I, I like the Dr. Evil uh, delivery. That was pretty you got good. it. I, I, I pretty good. It. Look, here's the problem: the expanded green line at a billion, uh, the deferred maintenance on the T alone. When you take these things together. The, there is so much infrastructure that has been uh, avoided and neglected for so long, and we continue to build out the T. The problem is it is not sustainable. If you look around the country, most public transit systems need to be bailed out, need money from, from state governments. This is not sustainable. Boston is in worse condition than almost any in the country. But, it's, but it really is essential to the infrastructure and the movement of the city. It is. For many people, this is the only way they right. get to work. It should right. be the way many more people get to work. There has to be a happy ending to this, and it has to be done with responsibility laid at everybody's doorstep and a plan that goes beyond each and every governor. It shouldn't be a political issue. It's a performance so issue. So on top of that $765 right. billion that it would take every year to fund this thing, we add the other... Uh, one billion, and we've got serious money every single year. It's not sustainable. Speak, speaking of money, the, the city councils want to give themselves. City councils in Boston want to give themselves a pay raise. Right now, they're making 87.5. They want to make 35 grand more, arguing that 4,000 city of Boston employees already make over 100,000 a year. The mayor is against that boost, but comes pretty close to proposing 99.5. Marianne, does the city council deserve? any kind, this kind of pay raise. So the question is, are city councilors in Boston more valuable than state legislators? That's the real question here, and the answer is probably no in most people's eyes. The people who are pushing this on the council are the ones the Globe revealed go to the least amount of hearings. So I think there's a bigger question here where you have to look at all the public employee uh, payments and salaries, how everybody's paid so good people can make a good living in public service. I have one last point. The highest paid public employee in Massachusetts mm -hmm, mm -hmm. is the UMass basketball coach out That's at exactly Amherst right. that hasn't lifted a banner since the 90s when Calipari right, was there. Right. So there's something wrong across the board. Highest paid employee in the state of Connecticut is a basketball coach. Go ahead. He Patrick. wins, though. He, he does win. <laughs> that's, that's a good coach. point by you. Yeah, that's, that's a good point coach. by you. Uh, look, not 100 large to be a city councilor in Boston. Yeah. There's a certain UG factor to that. I think Marty Walsh is smart. He's pushed back, said he doesn't want the increase for him. But look, there are three challenge seats on that council. This is going to be a very big campaign issue. We continue on the record. Stay with us.